So stockish blue green infect. We have the invisible soccer spell skate sideboard plan. Like I mentioned before, I started recording here for YouTube. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the invisible soccer plan. I've had people board it in against me before, and it's always felt lackluster. So I'm interested to see how it plays out with us us behind the wheel with it. Yeah, yeah. The, the Invisible Stalker game plan seems awkward because you're like splitting your game plan kind of because like you don't cut all of your infect creatures to bring in Invisible Stalker, right? So, and in my experience, the way it's played out whenever I've played against infect is they've like gotten me to like six or seven infect and down to like four or five health and then I turn around and kill them. Whereas they would have just had more infect creatures, I would have just died. Yeah, I, I I think we're supposed to not keep no infect sevens. I mean, how much damage do I have? I've got 6, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got like 14 points in my hand. I've got 14 points in my hand. I'm going to keep... <laughs> I deserve that one. All right, Chad, all I'm going to say is we have a plan. I'm not... I'm not saying it's a good plan, but I would just like the record to reflect that a that a plan exists and I am I am adhering to it. They're, they're dead, right? I just killed them on turn three. Remember everybody that wanted the mulligan? Enjoy. Enjoy. Nice search, Fred's Canta. Pew, pew! All right. All right. We did it. Just clean. Clean 20 ball. Clean turn three 20 ball. There we go. There we go. I would like the record to reflect that I am an infect master. All right. All right. I would like the record to reflect that I am an infect master. And everybody that wanted the mulligan, very clearly you were wrong. Very, very clearly you were wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm pretty sure mutagenics come out against blue-white control. They actually didn't do any damage to themselves either. Like... I'm really very impressed with... I was expecting that game to go poorly for the record. I kept that hand thinking, maybe maybe this Invisible Stalker game plan is great. We just killed them from 20. I believe that's what the kids refer to as a manual kill. 
<sighs> Exceeds expectations. Yep. So how do we feel about this sideboard plan? I've cut Mutagenics, Dismembers, Become Amends for Invisible Stalker, Spell Skites, and Spell Pierce. Do we like that? Because that, that game felt like the exception, not the rule, right? All right, again, if you're going to tell me I'm wrong, you got to be constructive and specific on this channel. If you if you aren't boarding in Invisible Stalker against Blue White Control, where does it come in? I I like I've racked my brain and racked my brain and racked my brain. This is the matchup where you're supposed to bring in Invisible Stalker, right? It's the it's the removal decks. This this card's in my sideboard for the Liliana the Veil deck. Really? This this card's in my sideboard for the Liliana the Veil. I don't buy that for a hot second. That that seems like a terrible game plan. No, Rain Raincore is one of the best cards in a matchup like this. It is a it is a repeatable pump spell that kills our opponent very quickly. This is gonna be turn two stalker, turn three Raincore, Raincore that madman up and get in there. No, I don't I don't think I don't think Wild Defiance is very good here. I guess Wild Defiance triggers on our spells, but like I'm also cutting pump spells in this matchup. I'm pretty confident Wild Defiance is for the decks full of red removal. Decks like, uh, decks like Jeskai and Blue Red Tempo. I got you, Zach. Your tweet's better. Your tweet's better. I deleted mine. Invisible Stalker is used to tilt your opponents, not win games. Oh, I missed donations. J-Mac, yeah, sorry. I was doing so many things. That game one was worth an easy $5. See you at SCGCon. It went through the first time. I appreciate you doubling back up. I meant to get to it. Or is just a lot going on? Poor free nerds! Poor free nerds! You're, you're a monster, opponent. You're a monster. Fine. We're gonna get him. We're gonna get him for four here. Give him the old wet four. Yeah, this is this is time shifter or color shifted block drop of honey for those wondering. Uh, J Mac, you should whis whisper me in private, and I can send you the other one back after after my stream's done today. It's just two clicks for me on PayPal. I'm happy to do that. I appreciate the support. I don't want to take take dollar dues that someone didn't intend to send. So drop me a whisper to remind me to do it, because I'm gonna forget otherwise. But I am I am happy to send that that other that other five back.
okay? About to lose my, about to lose my stocky boy here. Poor little, poor little stocky boy. He has so much to live for. Big mean blue eye control player has taken him away from me. His papa who loves him. Is this getting dry at Arbor or Breeding Pool, chat? What land is this Windflip Teeth getting? I feel like I could go either direction. The five color pile was really bad. No, I think that would have been bad because the Porphyry Nodes would have just killed the Stalker the following turn. I don't know if we're winning with damage or infect. I feel like we could go either way at this point. Yeah, I think we might be able to get there on the back of the sync bot that says. It gets a little hazy if they... Ooh, this is... This is an aggressive attack. That is an... That is an aggressive... Do you have a field of rune? Wow, that is... All right. All right, I can... I can respect the size of your kahana as opponent. Yeah, it is a it is a large testicular attack there. All right, we're gonna fire fire this bad mamma jamma up. Opponent played this well. You should never fight over the infect creature inside of combat. If they have two paths plus a counter spell here, we lose this fight, which sucks. Or double counter spell. But like, if they have double counter spell or another path here, why wouldn't they just do this inside of combat? Like they know, like I, I, there isn't a magic card that exists that like punishes them there. So they kind of took an unnecessary infect. Uh, the Green Eldrazi deck was okay. The Smash with Thought Seer decks always feel kind of clunky to me in modern. Unintelligible yodeling. Thank you, Pythreon, for the support. I appreciate it. Yeah, we got through two paths into this spell, which is not nothing. Click kills us pretty quickly, though. We need a, we need a thing of who's its chat. Just like any type of thing of who's its here, and we should be able to run them out very quickly. SCG Con is where the SCG Invitational takes place every year. It's in Roanoke, Virginia. Cryptic me, baby. Cryptic me. Come on. Poppy wanted a cryptic command. Ah. Yep. Yeah, I qualified to play in the Invitational when I top aided the Open in Indy earlier this year. Ernie and wins with the $10 donation. I'm having a great day today. Let's get you a great day at SCG Con. Thank you for the support. I appreciate that. Moving on up to the donation goal. Do, 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 The fact that they don't have a six mana here is like really good for these spell pierces. Makes any cryptics they have left in worse. What's the costume stretch goal for SCG? I need to start looking for costumes to see if there's going to be a stretch. I might, I might try and find a Jester costume to fit, to match the new Jester costume artwork that we have for the, for the channel logo and stuff. No, Indy was Blue Red Wizards. They know about everything except these might, Mites of Old Carosa. If this is a Jace, they're just dead. Just like, nice Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Are we done here? Are we done yet? 
What are we what are we doing with our lives? Can we have an existential moment here where we wonder why we're paying four mana to cash chase the mind sculptor before I kill you? Yeah, sure. Sure, Jace the Mind Sculptor resolves. Can't ever win the game of magic now. This Scoop King of Minds! This Scoop King of Minds, chat! We can never beat the Mind Scoop King! Alright, so they need to have White Source plus Path to Exile here to not die. Blue Source Dispel, not good enough. I have a Spell Pierce. You're dead. You're very dead. You are dead. You're dead. Very, very dead. Gonna kill you. Does that feel like a concession, Jace? It felt like a concession, Jace, to me. All right, just good. Good clean 2-0 living there. Good clean 2-0 living. Yes, running them, running them down. That was, uh, that's pretty dece. That was pretty dece. Chat, we currently at the moment have the very perfect sub point count of 2222 so i'm not saying that you shouldn't subscribe but i am just saying that like the number is currently perfect i'm putting a quarter in the jukebox mazer mouse pushing us up over the perfect number thanks for the support i appreciate that welcome we're not keeping this one. It doesn't have a noble hierarch. Everybody, everybody knows you need a noble hierarch to turn three kill. Radagast gifted out the subs as well. I might have known that showing the perfect number would bait people to sub. You could probably argue that I'm even a master at baiting. That's a timeout. I got you, Mazer Mouse. Three, three, three. I, I think it's probably not a stretch to imply that three, 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 three is probably impossible for a magic stream. That is, that's like far and away higher than any magic stream has ever had. Honestly, even, even the number I'm at now, like aside from like Durward, that's far higher than most magic streams get to. Had three, 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 the unbanned stone forge mystic. The new, the new reclamation sage night. I very much look forward to conceding to so many turn three cards with that card in my hand. What about Kenji? I think. Last time I saw Kenji's stream, actually, I think Kenji is Kenji up now. Kenji keeps his sub count on his stream. He was streaming earlier. Kenji looks like he his number is currently at twelve hundred or so. Green source, green source. Are we dead? I think we're dead. We're probably dead. Uh, sub points are a metric of how much income you have for the most part. So every every sub point that you have translates to about two point five dollars for or more for a streamer. Yeah, it's so it's not directly the number of subscribers because like tier two and tier three subs give more points. So like a tier three sub is worth six points and a tier two sub is worth two points. We got two more turns. Nah, I bet we're dead next turn. I bet we're dead next turn. Hot take. Greenway Value Town was never good, and this night card doesn't change that. Yes! Serum Visions! Serum Visions!
Getting that ninja money confirmed. Exactly. Yeah, I bet we're still dead. And you know, I'm glad they keep Stoneforge Mystic banned because it's unfair and unfun when you get to untap with a two-mana creature and win the game almost every time. It would be unreasonable if there was a two-mana creature in Modern that when you untap with it, you were almost guaranteed to win the game. Right? Right, R&D? Right? For those, for those that are wondering, the shortcut, if, and this isn't conceding too early, them casting Gifts Ungiven with a creature in play with three mana floating is deterministically dead. So we are deterministically dead here. That is not, that is not an early concession. That is, I'm conceding because we are deterministically dead. If we would have hit a green source there, we probably would have killed them. What am I supposed to trim here? I definitely want these four. I don't think I want anything else that's in the in the side. This is probably not a Rancor matchup, right? This is not a matchup that goes long. Arbor out. I like that. Yeah, well, this is not an Arbor Elf matchup. And then a Vines of the Vastwood. They don't interact a ton and this is a little slow. It was kind of about Stoneforge Mystic. That rant, a lot of the thing a lot of people use to defend the banning of Stoneforge Mystic is that if you untap with Stoneforge Mystic, you're very likely to win the game and that makes it unfun. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I'm gonna keep this. It's only got one threat and one land, but it's got a dismember and some pump spells, so. Three months. Thanks for the feedback on Blue Eye Tron. Trying the new build at FNM tonight. Thank you, Jose, for the support. I appreciate it. My poor little friend. Creature. That would almost be a creature if I hadn't boarded out my elf. At least we have a Doom Blade for their first threat. It'd be kind of be funny if we lost to Storm with this deck, but beat Blue White Control. I feel like we're supposed to be the flip there, right? Like this deck's supposed to be pretty decent against Storm, but bad against Blue White Control. But I say I don't know that for sure. I definitely don't have a ton of experience with this archetype. Let's grab our Breeding Pool here. And for any threat, even an Ink Moth is reasonable. Although these Vines of the Basswood are a lot worse with Ink Moth Nexus just because we have to pay green green to kick them up, which is bad for us. I have not seen the new demon. I, I responded to you. I said I hadn't seen the card. Fuzzy, thank you for the bits. I appreciate it. Honestly, there's probably a lot of play in both of these matchups. I think both of our decks become a little bit interactive post-board, which probably gives it more play. You know, I probably should hold that fetch land for, um, for a, uh, a, what's it called? The landfall pump spell. No, Gift Storm is not on the no-fly list. I don't mind playing Storm. It's it's linear, but it's powerful. Is dismember one of the one of the most offensive Frexy mana cards? Like after is it like mental misstep, Gitaxi and probe dismember? Is that the order? 
What do you, if you had to if you had to rank offensive offensive Frexy mana spells, that's that's the ranking, right? No, I actually I actually don't think surgical is offensive. Surgical is one of the few cards where like I'm very okay with it costing Phyrexian mana because the things it's stopping are more degenerate than free mana. Yeah, Phyrexian mana in general is offensive, but you know, there are Phyrexian mana cards that just like aren't very good, right? It stopped our tireless tracker. It did. It they did take our tireless trackers away from us. I loved my tireless trackers so very much, Chip. All right. Well, we are out of fetchable lands. Norns annex. Ugh. I guess I'm discarding vines of the vast wood here, right? Spike tournament grinder most busted. Hey, look, they're giving us a, a gifts to com a counter. Uh, we boarded out Dryad Arbor because people said that this wasn't a grindy matchup. But the more we play, the more I'm thinking that I should just like never board out the Dryad Arbor. The problem with burning that spell pierce is we have no other interaction for them. So like, we just have to like hope they can't do anything at this point, which sucks. That's true. Once we, if, if a threat sticks, it's it's gonna happen. Gonna do stuff very quickly. Do do says all right all right So yeah saying there's a chance That's all I need chat all I need is a chance take a chance on me do 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 are we dead yet? Do 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 do. I assume we're dead. Do 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 do. Drago Infect for the win, right? If, if they've drawn close to as badly as we have, we should be able to talk this out here. Especially with the Mutagenic Rose being like free production spells. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, they're passing. That's so good for us. That's, you're back to... Charging. Charging Melisa. I guess I should have... I guess I should have kept... The Vines of the Vast would maybe discarded this Groundswell. We're going to get got by double, double bounce spell here. We're going to get got by double bounce spell here. Yeah, they could have Wipe Away. That's a really good point. Pretty sure I'm just supposed to do this. Never would have kept that other vines the vast would over this. I'd have another way to protect in my hand here. This is really good for us. 
This is, this is really good for us. Good luck, Kent. I definitely discarded wrong. Ew! Got him. Got I love that this is a no justice stream. It's my favorite kind of stream. I'm gonna cut the second Pendlehaven in and bring the Dryad Arbor back in. This sand seems pretty good. It's got double threat plus spell pierce. It's like a dismember away from being the nuts, right? You like how I cleverly boarded out the second Pendlehaven and just drew our one of in the opener? That's how a professional does it, chat. Take notes, take notes. They could have natural tendrils us. They don't have a land. They don't have a land, chat. All right, I'm going to opt to hold up Spell Pierce here because I'm Spell Piercing the crap out of a cantrip. Are, are you dead yet? Are you dead yet? We are 1-0 oh in this league. This is game three of the second match. Ooh, piece of candy. Mmm, a piece of nummy candy. Are they actually dead? I think they're actually dead, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sure. Hey, oh, let's go. Hey, oh, let's go. Do, 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 Wait, did I miscount? No, we're good. We're good. We're good. Do, do, do. Alright, 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 alright. Onward, upward, backward, forward. Man, this whole playing good deck thing is great. Decks like decks like this and what's that other one we played? Uh card and scales. They make magic seem easy. Make magic seem easy, opponent. I mean, just, just like play your cards and then they die. It's so great. What are we doing, folks? How are we doing? Happy Friday, TGIF. Got almost a thousand people hanging out here this afternoon. Everyone's having a great start to your weekend. My name's Jeff Logan. I'm a full-time streamer, memer, magic content producer, whatever you want to call it here on Twitch. Put these bits where they do the most good, feeding the fat kids. Thank you. I'm Amar. Declan does love to eat. Um... 
While, uh, if you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm here streaming because I love doing it, but my subscribers are the people that keep me here day in and day out. I wouldn't be here without their support. By subscribing, you can also support my content by checking out some of my very wonderful sponsors. MTGOTraders.com would love to buy and sell some magic online cards with you. And if you use code Hoagland PayPal and check out with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there with them. BCW Supplies would love to help you protect your very valuable gaming accessories. Using code Jeff10 at BCWSupplies.com, you can save 10% on um, sleeves and deck box and all sorts of other great stuff there. Uh, Honey is a free browser add-on that when you install it using link bit.ly forward slash Google Honey, you'll be supporting my content here at no cost to yourself. What Honey does is when you're shopping online, it takes a look at stuff you throw it in your shopping cart and then uh, tries to save you money on things. And if it can find you a coupon code, it offers it to you. And if it can't, it leaves you completely alone. Christy and I have been sleeping with Lisa for the last uh, three months now, and uh, we really love it. I don't think we'd ever go back to a traditional pillow top mattress. You can save $160 or more on your new mattress with them by checking out links bit.ly forward slash Hooglebed US and bit.ly forward slash Hooglebed CA. Uh, yeah, this, this seven's pretty good, right? We've got like triple threat, both our colors, and some pump spells. Just like really good spread of stuff here. The sideboard guide in the August 1st article is still applicable today. So it's funny, one of the reasons why I've kind of shied off writing sideboard guides a lot in the past is because of questions like that. Basically, you change like one card in a deck list and all of a sudden people are like, I, I don't know how to sideboard with the guide anymore. The guide's not relevant. It's like, well, the guide kind of has a lot of generic suggestions in it that are applicable even when a couple of the details have changed. So... Just be just because there's like another a braid in the sideboard now instead of a roast, I you can probably deduce that like you should bring that in where you bring in roast, etc. All right, so they're just like dead next turn, right? This this matchup's supposed to be really good for us, right? Infect's supposed to be really good against all these other linear decks because our 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 goldfish is a little bit faster than theirs consistently. Lauren is just like certainly playing eggs here. I probably want Nature's Claim in this matchup, right? Killing KCI probably buys us a relevant amount of time. They can block on occasion, so is Rancor good enough? What am I trimming? Corruptor over Mirror makes sense. Oh, Psy tokens. Yeah, that makes Rancor worth having in for sure. Maybe. We'll see. I have no idea, Weasels. I don't have enough experience with this archetype to know what's better or worse there. I would recommend deferring to people who have more experience with it. I don't know. Growth and Becomement both give you like crazy fast nut draws. Huh. You think I'm keeping this?
Dryad Arbor, just like Rancid, two games in a row. Has Dryad Arbor had been any other mana producing land, it would have been excellent. I think that first hand would have been keepable, and this hand would have been better. I mean, like, if you don't play main deck Dryad Arbor, do you play a 20th mana producing land? So, like, your logic there is bad and you should feel bad. Like, saying that hands like this are why the Dryad Arbor is bad, you'd play a Birds of Paradise instead, that doesn't make any sense because if this was Birds of Paradise, this hand would have been unplayable, we wouldn't have done anything, and the hand before this that we mulligan would still be unkeepable. So saying the Dryad Arbor is bad in these situations and then telling me the cards you replace it with is even worse in those situations makes zero sense. Like, that, that like, I believe you that maybe the Dryad Arbor is not ideal, but like, looking at these situations and saying, this is why it's bad, and then telling me you'd play a card that would be worse, that doesn't make any sense. Now, if you told me, like, it was a 20th mana producing land, then both these hands would have been much better. I agree with that. But you're telling me to replace it with something that's just, like, worse. All right, I'm going to concede to Scrap Trawler here. Save myself some time. Again, constructive, specific feedback. Tell me. Tell me why you think it's worse and what you're replacing with and why that thing is better. And then we can compare situations. And you told me what it's better. It's just like, that's completely wrong. I, would, I literally wouldn't have cast a spell that game if that had been a Birds of Paradise. I would have scried bottom and then like never, never cast a spell. I think the sand is good. It's it's a little threat light. Or it's a little it's a little bit pressure light the way this hand's gonna apply pressure. It, it kinda has threats. Like the the ink moth needs more mana to work to actually be a threat. I'm actually just gonna fire off the spell peers. Are the rumors true? Is there going to be a legacy date? Yeah, I not this Monday, but the Monday after. I think we're going to do Vintage followed by Legacy Memes. Thank you for the 13 months, JMP. I appreciate that. I think we're going to do the Vintage Belcher deck and then Spanish Inquisition, Cheerios, and uh, Infect. Glandy hasn't died in my absence, has it? Because that would be bad. What's going on, Brecken? I wanted to spell Pierce there. Because that is the most likely way to turn into a KCI. And I would like to start attacking them. I need to actually kill them and end the game. So I'm going to be tapping out here. So I can start attacking them with Inkmoth Nexus. How did, how did I overboard? I boarded in like four cards. I boarded in one, two, three, four, four cards. Literally, literally four cards. That is bad for us. I guess it's technically six, but like I traded out a creature for a creature. Yeah, the, the ink moth next it makes it hard to hold up spell pierce, so I'm incentivized to play it on something as appealing as possible as soon as possible, so that way I get some value out of it and then can start pressuring my opponent. No, JMP, I don't want to play anything interactive in Legacy. I just want to cheese people. Hey, remember that Dryad Arbor people were talking crap about a hot second ago? We're going to fetch that out and beat them to death here.
That's unfortunate. I'm actually not gonna attack here, and I'm just gonna nature's claim this. I didn't I didn't I almost nature's claimed on end step, but I wanted to wait and see if we could draw another lane so that I could Viridian Corruptor it. I think I already have four decks for the day. It's tough to get through more than four decks usually. Although nature claiming them twice makes it harder for Dryad Arbor to close. Oh no. Hey, come on, untapped land. Ooh. All right, so we just have to hope we don't die next turn. We're probably dead to land KCI, but definitely just need to do this and like hope to kill them. Oh, I guess they get back Pirate Spell Bomb here, but I have, uh, I have a Mutagenic Growth, so I get to get to cover that Axis. Uh, we're 2-0 in this league. This is game three of the third match. I assume this is land, KCI kill me. I'm gonna concede to a, to a strap trawler here. A little, a little too long to go in there. Maybe attacking, maybe attacking the Ink Moth in when I didn't have any protection up was bad post board. Because they generally bring in like Lightning Bolts and Galvanic Blast and stuff. Velik! The big 5 0 donation. Cut the line for Wits mid range. Will do. Will do. Uh, Velik, as a heads up, Bio Company is a cut as well. So you'll be in, you'll be in after Bio Company. Why do you make it so hard for you to give me my money? Sorry, JMP. I just don't want to get into doing too much legacy stuff. I feel dipping in for some memes shouldn't be too frustrating. And thanks for the support. Esper... Uh, Esperwitz. Let's call it Esperwitz, shall we? What percentage do you think you're dead there? I mean, like, why don't you just make up a number? Because you making up a number is really no different than me making up a number. We were we were some percentage to be dead, and it's miserable sitting there waiting, which is why Eggs is a miserable deck. And if you're miserable while playing Magic, you should stop playing, because Magic's a game you should be playing for fun. I play Magic for fun, at least. 50-50, either you win or you don't. I play magic for the misery. Commiserate me, baby. Commiserate me so hard. Gotta, gotta show your work. If you're convinced we weren't 100% dead, you gotta explain why. This isn't like most places on the internet. We ask you to leave for 10 minutes if you if you post things that aren't objectively true. So here, I want to play Glistener, play Noble, hold up uh, Vast, what I think here, Vines. I am a I'm a very clean shell Brecken Sky, unlike many people that frequent magic tournaments. I take showers. Noble Hierarch is very good. Pump spell. Pump spell. Pump spell. 
Pump spell. Pump spell. Ew. Would would you like to jump block opponent? Would you like to jump block? Oh, I didn't need to. I just I thought that was might have old Carosa. That was that was a bad pump spell. The reason why I played it when I did was because I'm bad. The answer to answer your questions. The reason why I played that when I did is because I'm bad. Hot take math MS into adjunct math teacher is actually the perfect training for success. You're not wrong, Hippity. What I do here is basically the same as when I taught. Only, only I get to be marginally more blunt here. I get to sugarcoat things less. Gosh, that's a good draw. Can we just like take a second and appreciate how good of a draw that was? Nice Tarmogoyf. Block this one. Uh, they are not quite dead. If I kick this, this only gives it nine. Yeah, I, in my opinion, Mardu Pyromancer is the only really good deck with Blood Moon in Modern right now. I don't think Blood Moon is great in general, but Mardu is able to play Blood Moon when it's good and Faithless Looting it away when it's not. If you ask me for my recommendation, I would definitely say Mardu Pyromancer is my recommendation for Blood Mooning people. Uh, I adjuncted at several, several different small colleges in the central Illinois area. I, um... When I, I, and, and just like when I was streaming and I got started here, um, when I was teaching, it was because I really liked both doing math and teaching. I was, I wasn't doing it for the money, Lord knows, because the money is terrible. What if we didn't do that? What if, what if instead we didn't? You're a monster! Way to murder, way to murder my pet opponent. Uh, I really don't have great lines here, huh? I guess I just like Rancor up. How do you feel about Rancor up the Dryad Arbor and attack them? Or do I Rancor up the Glistener Elf? I'm going to rank her up the Glistener Elf because they're forced to trade their Tarmogoyf then. Now I'm going to force them to take the Karmogoyf off the table while they don't have a removal spell. Taking the Tarmogoyf off the, off the table makes all the rest of my attackers better, which is nice. It also lets me redeploy the Rancor this turn without fear of them killing the creature that I'm attaching it to in response. Someone, thanks for checking out, honey. I appreciate that. Going on the the honest damage plan here actually makes their dark confidence pretty significantly worse. Because it means their health total isn't just a free roll. Is it okay, draw? Get trampled by my dryad arbor. The big bad scary dryad's coming for you. Maelstrom pulse, yep. Like, on one hand, maelstrom pulse is annoying. On the other hand, it dealt three damage to them. 
Are they Maelstrom pulsing my Rancor? You must not realize how Rancor works, so let's teach you. All right, good. Hope everybody was paying attention there. Skylasher, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The fact that they're not flashing back Lingering Souls should mean they have a removal spell here. But at the same time, that means this Vine to the Vast one is probably lethal. This card has rules text on it? That's so unfair. Why is there rules text on it? Do me dirty. Survey says. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Ip, ip, cheerio, mate. Get that. Get that raw damage kill. This was fun. Let's do it again sometime. Thank you, Brecken. I appreciate that. I'll be, I'll be here. You know, you know where to find me. Too bad, it's too bad we had the Dryad Harper instead of the bird. You're not wrong. Sky Lasher, thank you for the brand new sub as well there. Almost missed that one. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. That game was a very good example of why Dark Confidant leaves a lot to be desired, in my opinion. Mutagenic Growth seems kind of medium against Abzan. Invisible Stalker is definitely great. Uh, Spell Skate's probably pretty good here, right? Does have like a lot of more expensive removal. Thicker Claw Mirror, Rancor, both absurd. And trim a Become Immense. Yeah, Trim 2 Becomes actually. Growth Submit comes out for these. Let's do it. Actually, you know what? Might of Old Corrosive is probably pretty bad. Because Might's a sorcery speed one. Yeah, I think these Becomes are probably better than two of the Might's. Thinking about it some more. This hand is very good. Learn his Mulligan 2-5. Hopefully Invisible Stalker here is going to give him the business. I will say this. Invisible Stalker definitely looks much better than Geist of St. Traft in your hands that don't have Noble Hierarch. Like, with Noble Hierarch, Geist of St. Traft is, like, obviously absurd. So, they shocked for Overgrown 2 on 1. Do we just, like, tap Breeding Pool Go here? Yeah, I'm just not going to let them be mana efficient. You can beat the crap out of Abzan, just leave Jund alone. Uh, Esper Wits is Champion of Wits. Battle of Battle of Wits does not make Magic Online happy. Nihil Spellbomb, okay. Uh, it is it is not Master Mouse. The reimaging of the Tron deck from the other day is Blue White Eldrazi that will come up in the queue at some point. They they really didn't like our Rancor. Sure. Well, they're about to die very quickly. Even, even Liliana's not really good enough here. They need Liliana plus a way to kill the Inkwath Nexus. Invisible Stalker looks really good here. And that was one of the cards I was most interested in seeing and feeling like how it played out. It was good against both Blue-White and it feels very reasonable here. 
Sure, your souls linger. Become immense is lethal. Uh, Pendlehaven is also lethal. Hey, oh, let's go. Do, 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 do. So interactive, do, do. We are interactive, do, do. Gonna be interactive. Boop, 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 boop. Blue and green doesn't really make a good combination in modern because modern is a format that's about um, tempo and impacting the board and blue and green cards don't really impact the board efficiently. You need you need lightning bolt, path to exile, or fatal push to really have a chance in modern. Slaughter pack stopped seeing as much play in modern because delve threats became more prevalent. And that's, those are a big thing that those cards miss. Blitzkrieg Bop really does seem like the most appropriate theme song for this deck. It really, really does. Uh, we've not played Bio Company yet. Again, for those new to the stream, the decks that are listed in the stream title are decks that are that are yet to be played today. So those will be... So after Infect, this is our last match with Infect. We're going to play Bio Company followed by Esperwitz. And then we're going to have uh, green-white scales and blue-black berries if we have time at the end. So, Chris, Christopher, I actually, it's a fun, it's a fun comment because I actually think that this deck is one of the better, better linear decks to have be good in modern. So this is a little bit of a gamble, assuming my opponent has a, has an Eidolon, but we're probably not beating Eidolon anyway, so I'm just going to like hope for the best here. This matchup is very bad for Infect. And this sideboard doesn't really have cards for it. Oh, it's not traditional burn. Sweet. This is that, that like budget 30 ticket deck that's been going around. Kick it. Do, 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 do. Be do 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 be do 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 Ah, the flame of Kells is strong in this one. Well, 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 well. Um, um, um. So I'm gonna play Dryad Arbor out here. I'm going to animate this. I'm going to Rancor it up. I'm going to hope to kill them next turn. I mean, Smoke on the Water at least has... I guess Blitzkrieg Bop kind of has it. the name in there. But like when they say Blitzkrieg Bop during Blitzkrieg Bop, it's kind of like muddled right like smoke on the water is very clearly smoke on the water do 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 boo, do 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 is the opponent playing standard yeah kind of kind of sort of i'm not gonna block with dryad arbor here because i want the extra mana in case we draw a pump spell or a protection spell sorry hopefully we draw like a blossoming defense or something here listener elf I think I just have to go for it here, unfortunately. Yeah, someone 5-0'd with an iteration of the deck the opponent's playing at one point. This, this slam of kill just means we're dead.
Hmm. We just really don't have tools for this. Previously, Infect Ducks have played like a bunch of kitchen finks and stuff like that in the sideboard, but they just have too many things here. We have like a Wild Defiance and a couple of spell skites, but it's just like not going to be enough. The thing you were missing was that it didn't matter what we did. We were dead regardless. That's that's the part you were missing. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We didn't have a line to win. The, 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 the reason why I tapped it was because if we didn't kill them there, we were dead regardless of what happened. Um, thoughts and feedback on Infect. Invisible Stalker was impressive against both Abzan and Blue-White Control. I, as someone who frequently preaches the merits of having good mana and not splashing third colors needlessly... Um, this felt reasonable over, like, what Geist of St. Traft has done in the past. I definitely think, especially against a deck, like, if you're expecting your opponents to have Field of Runes, like, Geist of St. Traft becomes an even bigger liability because they can, like, field you off your white mana. And, uh, Invisible Stalker kind of punched the clock and went to work. Opponents are generally a little bit more liberal with their health total against Infects, so you get a little bit of free points in that direction, too. As far as, like, the details go, again, when it comes to more established archetypes like this, I really don't like giving too specific feedback because there's lots of really good Magic players out there that have worked on decks like this a ton. And as far as little details go, you should definitely look and read up things like, you know, Aaron Barrett and other, other good Infect players like that have played and put work in on what their thoughts are currently. Uh, all right, so what do we got next? 